It has only been a few days since I became aware of trailer buses, and it took me one of those days to persuade myself that I hadn't just made up the concept of trailer buses because, well, just look at these things. In case you didn't already know, a trailer bus is just a bus that has a trailer attached to the back of it. These days, there are not one, but two distinct types of buses that pull trailers, semi-trailer buses and full trailer buses. From what I've gathered, a trailer bus is a type of vehicle that pulls a bus-like trailer and is specifically built to convey passengers. Trailer buses normally take one of two forms, one of which is a tractor unit pulling a semi-trailer along with it. It is possible for the tractor unit to be either a purpose-built unit that was intended expressly for use with the trailer bus, or it might be a typical conventional tractor unit, a full-size trailer that is generally pulled behind a normal bus in order to give additional capacity. A bus trailer is another name for this type of vehicle. Full trailer buses that are attached to conventional buses are still in use in certain applications around the world, such as tourist vehicles, despite the fact that semi-trailer buses have mostly become obsolete and have been taken out of service. You might not have noticed that these aren't on the roads anymore if you haven't left the house in a while. There are a few very good reasons for this, one of which is that even at the height of their popularity, they were still pretty rare in most areas of the world. Starting with the design, it was based on an articulated trailer, which was a form of bus that combined two cabin compartments into a single bus in a manner that was analogous to how train cars were attached to one another. This brand new bus had an engine and cab similar to those used in semi-trucks, which are typically employed in the shipping business to pull tractor trailers that are laden with goods. The back of the vehicle was a trailer that had been transformed to look and feel exactly like the cabin of a bus. However, the trailer was still linked to the truck via the hitch. The design of the trailer bus was seen in use in a great number of urban locations beginning in the 1930s and continuing into the 1980s. The financial advantages offered by the trailer bus were one of the most important factors contributing to its widespread adoption. Therefore, why were they used? To be honest, that question has more than one plausible response, each of which requires some background knowledge for proper comprehension. Back in 1924, in response to the fact that lengthier buses of the time were unable to pass over some of the city's circular bridges without grounding out, these buses were initially designed in Amsterdam. But for instance, if the engine of the conventional bus were to break down, the vehicle would be rendered useless until the necessary repairs were done. Similarly, if the cabin of a bus became obsolete or broken, the entire bus might need to be scrapped and replaced with a new one. There were only three of these buses manufactured. The overbridge services were terminated in 1927, after all three of these buses were retrofitted with rigid chassis at the same time. Later on in the year 1939, the Australians made the decision to experiment with trailer buses and had a little bit better success as a result, producing 123 of these vehicles. Because of World War II, when the British weren't particularly in the business of selling their double-decker buses, they were mostly used in Australia for the purpose of transportation. At the time, Australia had a requirement for some kind of big-capacity bus, and for whatever reason, they decided to go with the trailer bus. Surprisingly, the last Australian trailer bus continued to operate all the way up until 1984. Around the year 1945, the Dutch gave the concept another shot by purchasing 250 Crossley tractor units from the United Kingdom. These tractors were intended to be paired with a bus trailer that were manufactured locally by the Dutch company DAF. These buses were only used as a stopgap measure to bolster the nation's bus force, which had been damaged by the war. The final one ran until the middle of the 1950s, so they were only around for a few years. After a period of testing in a few towns during the early 1960s, the Czechoslovakians gave their version a go, and as a result, a small fleet of trailer buses was able to operate profitably in Bratislava for a total of 17 years. Trailer buses continued to be used in South Africa until at least the year 1984, which may have been possible due to the rough terrain in the country's more rural parts as well as the availability of expert bus builders as opposed to truck dealers and simple body builders. Trailer buses are still in use in Cuba, where they were first introduced during the so-called Special Period, after the fall of the Soviet Union. These buses were given the moniker Camelos, or Camels, from the twin hump shape of the trailers when they were initially put into service. According to reports, the trailer buses have been phased out of operation in the city of Havana since 2008 and their position has been taken by buses manufactured in China. 
In spite of this, the Munich Public Transportation Authority placed an order with Solaris for a number of trailer buses with deliveries beginning in 2013. These buses were designed to operate on the city's busiest routes when they were first put into service. The ability of these buses to either connect or remove the trailer depending on the demand for it, as well as their spaciousness and adaptability, were all advantages. Even though I was able to discover a lot of photographs of these online, there is a substantial dearth of information other than the fact that the most of them were in operation until the middle of the 1980s. South Africa was another country that found the trailer bus to be appealing. This is also the case with a few other photographs, including these examples from the United States, the Ukraine, Japan, and Switzerland, as well as these examples of double-decker photographs from Namibia and India. Although trailer buses are considerably more common than just in the few countries I've mentioned, I don't know enough about them to say much more than that without an expert present. The Ford V8 Tri-Coach was articulated in the same way that other semi-trailer buses are articulated, but it was driven from within the trailer with the steering column and gear shift traveling through the fifth wheel. Another one that I want to show off is this wild-looking one that was manufactured by Ford and is called the Ford V8 Tri-Coach. I can see why on paper, trailer buses can seem like a good idea, particularly during times when there is a shortage of buses. However, in practice, they are primarily just difficult and expensive to operate. It can be challenging to get drivers due to the fact that many truck drivers would rather not have to worry about having live human cargo and many bus drivers are not trained to drive vehicles that are that large. Because this mode of transportation was only ever intended to be used as a stopgap measure, the trailer bus was doomed to fail the moment it was first put into service. These enormous trailers and the tractors that pull them have difficulty navigating the narrower streets, so they are restricted to driving on routes that are wide enough to accommodate full-size commercial trucks. In addition, maintenance costs are higher due to the fact that this configuration calls for the participation of two people, one to operate the tractor and the other to operate the trailer and collect tolls. To tell you the truth, I believe that the only person who benefited from the trailer buses is the driver, because they finally get some rest when they're behind the wheel. The public's opinion of the semi-trailer bus became increasingly negative over time, and as a result, the employment of these vehicles was phased out. This was due to the relatively low risk of the trailer being detached from the tractor while the vehicle was in motion. This is a really unusual occurrence, but I can see how it could happen if you were sitting in a trailer as it was moving around on the highway. I could see how your mind can stray to such things. It's sort of difficult to find information about semi-trailer buses online, so if anyone has any additional details about them, please let me know. I'm really interested in knowing more about them, and it'd be greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will be back soon with more amazing content, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our latest updates. Thanks for watching.